Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time for Off the Press, where we take the global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me, um, joining us to have a conversation is Chris Kennedy Wandu, is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, joining us from Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I say milk with cheese, milk with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a great time having you because I love the energy. All right, we're going to be talking about the papers this morning and we'll be starting with The Guardian. Now, the leading story here says 198,432 pending court cases leave many in jail, businesses stranded. So this is talking about the slow justice system in Nigeria. What is your take? Uh, it's a big concern to all of us, uh, especially those of us in the legal profession. It's a very, very big concern. Um, most of you go to most of the prisons, uh, you see that close to about 60 to 70 percent of those in the prisons are those awaiting trial. Waiting trial yeah. And uh, that has become a pro big problem and a big issue as it were. Yes, I started by saying that those are very fundamental problems with those of us in the legal profession. Um, uh, when you see the number of people awaiting trial, um, it becomes a big issue. If you go to the uh, if you go to the prisons, um, you come to realize that close to sixty to seventy percent of people in the prisons are those awaiting trial yeah. right. or even minor offenses, very very minor offenses. You see somebody just uh, um, just for minor theft or just some insubordination or something minor minor cases that you realize that most of them are not supposed to be there. There are issues with that. One is because of the number of um, the, the judges we have at both at the lower, middle, and upper uh, courts, then it's always very difficult for them to be to dispense. Um, then, too, it's also caused by legal practitioners like us. <laughs> you know, the way we delete the issues, we want to argue this. With, but at the end of it, we come to realize that the fact remains that uh, those, uh, no matter how bad the case is, it has to be argued. Then you see that uh, another aspect of it is that some of these issues it has not of to get the out. That is why we continue to advocate for what we call ADR, Authentic Dispute Resolution, exactly. which has been put in place. Yes, the Authentic Dispute Resolution is a mechanism where certain issues can be taken to um, lesser uh, dispute resolution um, committees and rest of them that it can be resolved. If I have a problem with my landlord that doesn't need, uh, the why do I have to go to court and go through all this issue of argument and or we can just go to the uh, to ADR and get the result. And within within 24 hours, that issue can be resolved. Yeah. Or you have to pay your money. If you cannot, <laughs> if you cannot, the how long will it take you to get? So those then so that we have serious issues coming to the courts, and that has always been the case. So that is why you're having this high case. Yeah, I will tell you for free that. If you go to Nigerian prisons, there are some people that have been granted bail as well. As less as 10,000 Naira for them to perfect their bail, they cannot be able to perfect their bail and remain in prison. That is how bad it is. Then also at times, the, even the uh, judges and just are not making the job easier because when you now set a very high um, uh, um, bail conditions, some of the people cannot uh, meet this bail. When you say bring somebody on level 13, bring somebody on level 15, bring their uh, uh, land, landed properties. So it is a whole bit of the So, so I, I just believe that we can, it is not how it is done across the globe. We have to find a midway so that some issues can be ironed out quickly as possible. And the, the justice dispensed as that as well. And it's, 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 it's linked to that is also a If you know the number of people on death row in Nigeria, so many people that have been sentenced to death for whatever reason. I know that across the globe, um, there's this uh, education that um, um, death sentence is out of, uh, it's no normal the norm. Um, rather, you just give a long sentence. But even in advanced countries like the United States, death sentence is still going. So, those are the why we are having this. And you, you know why, uh, the problem with this? There are some prisons that have the capacity to have about two, three thousand 3,000 prisoners. But at the end of it, you, know, you have about 10,000 people there. And that is why you easily have this jailbreak. Every time jailbreak, jailbreak. Mm. Those are the fundamentals as well. Mm. A jailbreak, oh, well. Oh, I saw one about the jailbreak in um, one of the countries in okay, Haiti okay. or yeah, somewhere. Haiti. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. obviously, because when you're seeing a lot of numbers like this, this is a hundred and something thousand. You don't even want that. Because that's why I was going to ask, so what is the role of the Arbitration Act? 
in Nigeria. Because I would want to believe that the reason why that is there is to ensure that it's only the serious cases that, you know, go to the court. But if you're having 190-something and a chunk of that would actually be petty cases, then... But the ADI also will have to be manned by people. Do we have the uh, manpower to do that? For arbitration? For everything that we need to do. Because if you are, you are talking about ADR, you just talked about ADR. So mm -hmm. ADR has to be manned by lawyers. There are arbitrators in Nigeria. Yes, you go to school for that. No, they, no, are, no, no. Me, they don't have to be manned by, by lawyers. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. ADR doesn't have to be manned by lawyers. Good. Yeah. That's not it. So Good. Have to be. Uh, because yeah, there, are people, there are people that are You go to school for it. That can, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, people with unquestionable characters can educate in ADR matters. And even to make it easier, Lagos State have what they call the mediation center. I can set up what is called mediation centers in most part of the states. Mm -hmm. So that mediation center as uh, normally domiciled in the local government um, is, is a department of the Ministry of Justice okay. in Lagos State. So what they just have minor issues, just go there. they don't even collect money from you. Do you know that they don't collect money? They don't collect money from you. You go there, state your case, then the other person will be invited, and um, you just sit down and look at the issues at the time. Once you are agreed on the tenth, then that's it. Uh, you, you, uh, uh, you, you, you just go. Let, let me not talk about the money collection you, part. Let's I just, mean, let's just that, that, that might be on paper, mm -hmm. but we don't know about that. No, no, no. Let me wait, 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 let me let me land on that. Mm -hmm. Let me land on that. I'm talking like somebody who is a law graduate. That is one. Two. And I'm also talking as somebody who has been a participant in this issue. Okay. I wasn't there. I'm not even read law. When I started having a, there was issue, I, I, I had issue and rest of And we took it, I'm telling you that not to work, it's why it's not trust. And it has been said to the issue of money, and that is the problem that most people believe. For Lagos State, I don't know other states, mm. I, I'm telling you. Go there. Yeah, but, but, but let me ask you this, this, this question. This, uh, you talked about bill being less than 10,000 and some people can't pay, which is true. Uh, but... At what point is bill supposed to have money attached to it? Because I they, kept, bill is free. they kept they keep telling us bill is free. So, at what point? No, that one that one is, is police. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm not talking that police is a different argument. That police will tell you that don't pay for bill. But I've never seen any police station that allow people to go home uh, on bill without collecting. They collect money. That one is basic. That one forget mm -hmm. about what this one they are saying. No matter how minute it is. Once you enter a police station, uh, which is why right, I'm sure you might be on the front pages of one of the uh, of the papers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I came out yesterday to talk about no more POS. No one to see, ban the use of POS in police station or police station across Nigeria. I is going to enforce that. Is what I don't I don't know how they're going to do that because yeah. if you say it's not in the police station, how come, are you sure that they don't have a POS? Somebody with a POS outside the police station and waiting for you to. So, but sometimes they right. even sometimes they have other operators that they work with. That's that that they, uh, there's possible. no name it's attached. Having to see police, having to see checkpoints instead of police collecting that thing, there's one person in one magistrate around mm -hmm. the checkpoint who we'll just go there, go submit to the correct. correct. They come back and so the police will start <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's move to another an, another headline. Let's. Let's combine these two. Federal government to begin grains distribution insists warehouse looting criminal uh, beyond hunger. And then uh, the other one down there, still on the Guardian, is uh, looting food warehouse reflection of hunger frustration of Nigerians, says INC. Okay, so this is what is going on. The federal government has again, uh, I'm using again and almost shouting, uh, mm -hmm. said that uh, grains will be distributed to Nigerians. That's on the one hand. And now we're seeing trucks, warehouses being looted. Even uh, one of the places that was looted, um, the grains were almost going bad. Mm. You know, I think NEMA office or something like that. The grains were almost going bad. These grains are there. People are suffering. People that the grains were directed to uh, possibly were suffering. And I'm, I'm not justifying uh, looting and all that. But what do you think about this? Government has said they are going to distribute um, grains and it will curb inflation. It will make food available and all the mm. reasons that they've given. What's your take? You know, when, started, when this thing started, we want and we want and want on this program and other platforms. First and foremost, it started with agitation. Second, uh, the second one was protest. Now it has moved to the issue of looting of warehouses. A hungry man is an angry man. 
I totally um, condemn the act of going to vandalize or loot warehouses as it were, uh, because some of these warehouses are also owned by individuals, Nigerians, who are just trying to make a living. And um, so I totally condemn that. But the fact is that what we are experiencing now is more than hunger. What we are experiencing now is what we can akin to a war, a war situation. This is exactly what is going on in the war between Gaza and uh, the Palestinians and Israelis. You've seen of, uh, in, in the past few days, where Palestinians were st stampeded and they died, and some were shot. Why? Because uh, very good uh, trucks bringing uh, materials from uh, Egypt and going into Gaza. I think those people are so hungry that they jump on this truck. In fact, there were instances where particularly some trucks have to climb, climb people that are trying to get some of these food items to eat. And most of them died. Over 100 died about three, four, five days ago uh, in Gaza. But bringing back to Nigeria, that is the true situation. Now, that's why we always to say that the, what the government is trying to do is not working. I said it here last week. I said they are leaving um, a, a headache and run after and try to treat Lakpa Lakpa. You know what Lakpa Lakpa is called in, in mm -hmm. Europe, but dandruff. That is not the solution to the problem. When you say, oh, we will open the reserve, we will create. How many grades do we have? How many people will it get to? Even when we release it to the state or something, they start pass it on to their, um, to their party members and even most of them get to sell it. So that is the, let us look for a lasting solution. You see the looting is going on. It is not just, um, uh, this, it's, I mean, even yesterday again, it, it, it was looted. And let me even uh, 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 mention the one you said about some of these so-called um, um, results. Get, particularly, I think it, it was during COVID also, where a big government warehouse was open. Yeah. And you see thousands and thousands and cartons of food like that, that, that. Most of them are gross points. I think it was never that owns that uh, warehouse. I asked yourself, why do you keep all these things? Is it not, is that, is that not wickedness? Instead of you sending it out and distributing it to people, you look at it. They say they are keeping it for disaster. Disaster and practically all of them are just so. What I will say in, uh, is, is that I think there should be a holistic look at the issue of this distribution. But that is not so the problem. Just as I said that the distribution of 10,000 or 15,000 or 50,000 to some certain individuals is not the solution to the problem. It's yeah. just a way of yeah. giving money. The, the, the issue is that let us face the fundamentals. How do we grow food? How do we get them? Um, um, uh, how well, do we get um, 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 farmers to go back to the farm? And that, those are the issues. The former minister, the former minister of agriculture, former minister of agriculture and current president of the African Development Bank has also said that monetary tools cannot solve food crisis. Uh, crisis. Yes, food price crisis. Uh, he's insisting that, and and I don't know. Uh, maybe you buy the same idea as him. He was there, and I tell you, in his time, I can say for a fact. It, it, I don't know whatever went on on the ground, mm -hmm. but as a minister of agriculture, everything was working. He had a system. Uh, all the inputs got to the farmers and everything. And I don't know, as soon as he left, the next government just jettisoned that mm -hmm. and that was it. There's no continuity. So he's saying that monetary uh, tools cannot solve this problem of uh, price crisis. They are just emphasizing what I said. I said it will not. Mm -hmm. It will okay. not in any way. Even by, let us even take it. How many people get this money? How many people? Mm. How many? Where's the register? <laughs> well, if we move over to the punch, um, a small headline on the top says um, the African Development Bank plans $2.7 billion um, dollar budget uh, Greek loans for Nigeria. So maybe this might just um, do something. If it's not wished by those in the government, if they pass it through the government, we are going to face the same problem. You go mm. to the Minister of Agriculture, the Minister of Amsec, and all the directors who share the money among themselves, and that is where it ends. We should find a way of identifying who these um, um, farmers are and try to read them directly. I think that is the best way to go about it. Try to read them directly. We continue. The way forward to me as a, as a long term is mechanized farming. Mm. Mechanized farming. I'm telling you, if you have the well mechanized farming, I can tell you that 10, maybe 100 mechanized farmers probably can feed Nigeria. Go to the United States and when you are traveling, when you travel to the US, you will see about how many. 20, 30 kilometers of land, farm, mechanized. You see tractors moving there and the rest of them. And that is how it is. And they have enough to, uh, uh, to produce. Yeah. In Nigeria, we see the mechanized one. 
If you go to your village now, the first thing as you are reaching the village this night, tomorrow morning, by five o'clock, you see them, they carry home, put it by their shoulder, mm -hmm. they are going to the farm. And you ask yourself, how many can they be able to, how many? They, not only that, the level of insecurity, most of them can't even because if they mm -hmm. go there, they are either kidnapped or killed by bandits. Mm -hmm. So the high level of insecurity is also a, a problem. When they finally produce, you can make sure you can see that even those produce cannot they cannot be preserved. Very shameful. Before you bring them from my brother's estate uh, of course, I bring it to Lagos. You know what it will cost. The road is bad. And he knows what I'm talking about. You know, you have, you have not talked about even the settlement of policemen because mm -hmm. there are roadblocks. So there are, there are roadblocks exactly. up to a thousand exactly. from Cross River to Lagos. Exactly. Yes, your place is noted for producing your well, I'm sticking to you. Yeah. Because you are a real homeboy. Yeah, yeah. Your place is noted for production of rice, rice. and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that very well. Now ask yourself, what level of incentive had government given people in your village to be able to produce? None. None. And that is the problem. And you continue to see every day, Minister of Agriculture said they budgeted one one hundred billion uh, to uh, farmers. Uh, one, so, 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 they even go as far as borrowing even uh, money from World Bank and the rest of them to get back. Nothing short for it. The money is not getting to the right people, and that is why we are we are we are. And you continue to say they are going to control prices of how you control prices of uh, food items. How? In what way? Mm -hmm. So I totally uh, if, uh, if the African Development Bank is going to do anything about that. I think I should find a way of making sure that we reach the final consumer, the farmers, the main farmers, not just passing it to government and they share it. At the end of it, they add it to five. Every step, every end of the money goes there. Governor will share it, convert it to dollars, and that will be the end of the story. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move over to some financial matters. Um, there's a small headline at the bottom that says banks involved in 70% of financial crimes, and that's been said by the EFCC. What do you think? I agree with them. You see, it can even more than that. How do you perpetrate um, fraud with that bank? Is it possible? Mm. One is the bank. Two is the fintechs. Three is the, what do you call it, the telecom companies. Because mm. when they pick up, less, most of this is uh, it, it, not skyrocketed. That is why you see somebody will pick you up, pick up on, and call you. I don't know the person. How did he manage to get my number? And tell me, I'm calling from social social bank. Uh, mm -hmm. you are this thing is you are you do not I can't do social 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 so, so, so. uh, we have just realized that we need to put to send your name in and this and that how did they get so that is I totally agree banks and also the intellectual companies and on we start holding these people responsible if I lose any money in my account I have the I supposed to have the right to sue the telecom company and also sue the bank. Most of them, you know what they tell you? Oh, you must have misplaced your ATM card. Oh, you mm -hmm. must have given somebody a pin, a tin, uh, your PIN number address. How would I give somebody my PIN number? The ATM mm -hmm. card that is in my pocket. How would I give it to you? Is it possible? Is it just possible for you to just give anybody? Oh, you compromise. How do I compromise? Do I have a right to your system? Do I get it? So, and that is what has been happening. So, I think the high, it's high time that um, consumer protein, and that is why you have also agencies of government are not doing their job. What is the work of the consumer protection agency mm. at the federal and state level? Why can't I go to federal um, um, uh, protection, uh, consumer protection and say, so 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 money, 30,000 is missing from my account. This bank have taken it. How do I recover it? And you say, okay, fine. Where is the bank? Time. Blah. And they write the bank and ask them to refund that money within 20, within 24 hours. If they don't, which we are going to get you. It will make all of them to be up as a, I cannot be heard. For the, um, for the compromising for the compromise of your system, I cannot be held responsible. So I totally agree with you that most of the um, the, uh, the fraud that perpetrated. Let me even let me even uh, uh, bust your book. You realize that some that lady at the uh, Ministry of Monetary Affairs who mistakenly transferred thirty nine billion, mm. my people, thirty nine billion. <laughs> I'm not saying thirty nine thousand. I'm not saying thirty nine million. <laughs> that mistakenly transferred thirty nine billion. To her personal land. Without the connivance of the bank, we should do it. True. Because funny enough, I was, I was going to say that most times, you know, there's some monies that would hit your account and the bank would probably freeze that money till you make a call to them. So they keep it. 
in that time, why can't they, you know, alert the certain agencies such as, you know, the EFCC um, that, okay, we need to trace this money to be sure that um, this money, you know, it came from the right source or what the money is used for. Because this even happened to me recently. I got an alert and I had to call the bank because the money would not drop. So I would see it, but it wasn't there in my book balance. And then they were, you know, questioning me, what do you want to use this money for and all of that. So why, why are the banks not, you know, taking that, especially especially when it comes to um, fraudulent activities like this. I hear also that uh, even banks so sometimes... Email, sometimes, sometimes the bank... Alert in your email. That huge email, you not tell me that. Sir? That huge uh, alert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I only Thank you for that observation. That. Thank you for that observation, no, please. Thank you. I only said that for the purpose of this question. It was for the no, purpose of this no, question. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for that. <laughs> You know. Yes, they got the prayer. It didn't tell us. But anyway, I just, you know, oh, God. Yes, but on this person, mm. I think they, we need the um, EFCC act. It was stated that any amount exceeding 5 million, that yes. the bank, I think 5 million or 10 million, that the bank ought to inform EFCC about it so that it can be, can give reason. In fact, you have to state where you got that money and what it's meant for. Mm -hmm. But the banks will follow that. They will not follow that at all. They won't. Because they just needed the money and they don't care where it comes from. So, until agencies of government, and that is why I've never seen, I've not of play, I've never seen, I, I mean, be wrong, you can correct me, where the FCC have taken any bank to court mm. for ads perpetrated by their customers through their system. True. Once they start doing that, EFCC, ICPC, and uh, the uh, police force unit, once you just see, notice that, apart from those holding the person, somebody responsible, you must also hold the banks responsible because they've been told that before you can move certain amount, the EFCC must be informed. Did you inform the EFCC when this person is making a transaction of 50 million, 100 million, 200 million to our account and the rest of them? If no, why didn't you do that? Those are fundamental, those are issues to be raised. But I still believe that all these issues, this connivance, there is no way can, anybody can perpetrate any fraud in the bank without the connivance of somebody in the bank. Go and check it. There is no way. There is always an insider fraud. It's just like in those days of fraud in the banks, although it has stopped now. You remember in those days, mm -hmm. you see that armed robbers will come and rob a bank. When they arrest, you see that some of the people that got arrested are people working in that bank who gave those armed robbers those leads. Information. That, oh, we have mm -hmm. some money here. Well, we, 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 even, we even know that some banks, sometimes we've heard stories where people die and uh, they leave their money in the bank. Maybe uh, they didn't have a clear uh, understanding of what the next of kin should be and yeah. nobody came. Yeah. They would just take it. They wouldn't say they anything. They wouldn't say anything. Uh, they would just take it. Forget that one. Forget that one. Mm. They make a key out of that. And that's why I think that they should have been a bit more flexible when you say your next of kin. Once you have a relative that dies, most of them are not about close to 60, 70 percent. The money left by that person that bank will get it. Mm. Because they'll put three gents, three gents, three gents, three gents laws into that it will make practically make it impossible. I think mm -hmm. they so they just will have that money and use it for that. If you know the money in the bank but that belongs to some people, to people mm. that just died and their money can't access it, you'll be mm. shocked. Uh, well, let's, let's move to the nation newspaper and take just one headline before we move to the next newspaper. Government takes minimum wage talks to Nigerians in zones. I don't know what hmm. you think about this. NLC is I'm talking really to, they're not even talking to <laughs> NLC. They're taking it to the zones to talk to who? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking. What do you think about this? Actually, I'm asking you to, I'm a journalist like you. <laughs> <laughs> You're also a lawyer, I'm not. No, make me, make me say an interview now. Yes, so where did they take it? I really don't understand what is going on. They are taking the minimum wage um, uh, talks to Nigerians in zones. I would like, expect the dialogue I should be with the like NLC, NLC, like NLC representing the people. NLC is trying to, to, the to people, strike the even. The people they are supposed to dialogue with, they are not dialoguing with them. Uh, they are taking it to But let me tell you, let me tell you the case. So people are budgeting money to do this. It's a way of making money. Because there will be budgetary allocation. You cannot just go to zones and... Some people don't go take this from Finland as well. Mm -hmm. After that, after taking to the zone, do you know the next thing they will do? They set up a committee mm -hmm. to look at the report. 
Mm. When they said after that committee to look at that report, that committee will submit. They now submit. They now set up another committee to look at the report of the committee that was set up, and we continue going that way. That is just being unnecessarily unserious on the part of those that are behind it. You have a labor, a labor that is there that is um, negotiating with you. You are jettisoning that. You are not doing the right thing. What you are doing now is just going around and going around. And I've said it time with that number. For me personally, I think we should decentralize, decentralize the issue of salary payment. States should be allowed. The federal government shouldn't be controlling what it should be paid. States should be allowed to pay what they can to their workers. Because I said it time with that number that even the 30,000 naira that was agreed, over close to about 15, 18 states, still now still can't pay it. And what are you talking about? Now the NSC is coming to say that they want 1 million naira, 1 million uh, uh, minimum wage. Are we serious at all? The government should get serious. There should be an amendment, probably to the law, if there's an existing law that it is only the federal government that can pay minimum wage. No, that should be decentralized. States should be able to agree what they can pay. They are the ones employing. So if I give you a letter of appointment, I say I'm going to pay you 30,000 naira at the end of the month. If you're not satisfied, then you say no. Local government should also be allowed to pay what they can pay. You cannot be a state, Lagos state, with so much resources, or what do you call it, or River State, or Bayesa, or uh, Apartment State, or even your state of uh, Cross River that is making so much money from oil wells. Mm -hmm. Now should pay the same thing with the state. It's more Cross River is not making money from <laughs> oil wells. Our oil wells were taken, given to Cameroon, and given to Aquaibom. And I don't know why that happened. And we were no longer producing any oil. Even though I yes, hear now that... I think, I, think we drop, on that, I totally agree with you. We dropped the ball with Bacas. See, today I can never for, we cannot forgive uh, President uh, Obasanjo for, for whatever it is. Yes, for whatever it is. Where he now... That is why initially Cross River used to be one of the highest earning yes. um, states in terms of fact. But it did, Obasanjo just came and did Father Christmas. I handed over the, 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 the no, no, we are not even at work. The Moro was not at work with us. We don't quarrel, we don't settle. So why would this say why would you hand over a whole rich oil community like Bakasi to Cameroon that needs doesn't need it? But I think that's a discussion for another day. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is that the issue of taking this minimum wage to the zones or whatever doesn't make any sense to me at all. It doesn't. All right, let's move over to the Daily Trust. Um, the leading headline says, Caruso wants Nigeria on debt risk. And the writer is, federal government states owe $139 trillion a Naira. And debt rose from $2.1 to $87 trillion in 24 years. So that's talking about um, the government. But then moving over to a smaller headline on the top, it says, private sector weak as economy, de economy declines by $44 billion in 2023. And that was being said by the Nigeria Economic Group Summit. What do you think about all of this? We're owing debt, you know, from the government side, and then even the private sector is weak as well. As inauguration in, uh, on 20, uh, um, the 9th of May, yeah. um, 2023, the president said that it's not going to be business as usual, that we're not going to be taking notes. I'm sure you remember that. Yes. Foreign notes for the foreign notes. Go and check how much this government have collected as loan from foreign uh, banks and the rest of them in the past nine months. You'll be shocked. And they continue continue. So that is, you know, that is double, that is double talk for me. Mm. You cannot say one thing at one break and still doing another thing um, in another break. It doesn't work like that. I've said it that time and time again that he goes borrowing, goes as sorrowing, and that is it. And you remember the analogy I made last time. I said, when I said, when you go borrow cloth, you go to party. No, go dance too much. You have to be careful. careful. No, go dance too much. Don't be careful. Be <laughs> because what the man here is in the party, I hear pra, you say, oh, God, be. Don't rip now, the cloth. This cloth, this cloth, you know that kind of thing. And that is what, that is what we are with. Most of the policies our government is implementing is policies handed over to us by IMF mm. and the World Bank. They don't even care. They give you this money and they give you conditions. And that is it, you have to follow it to the letter. And that is what we have seen that we have been having the position of the Naira as it were. The Naira has been depreciated in the last one to three years to a way that a manner that we cannot do. It was the advice of the IMF. If you stop going to borrow, I don't have any problem with borrow because I've said time and time again that even United States of America borrow, even United Kingdom borrow, Russia does, and even established countries. 
The difference between them and us is that why they use this as judicial, they, they, they can justify this. What do we use ours for? What do we use it for foreign trips, sending our guest friends and boyfriends and, and, and um, to the United States and the rest of them mm -hmm. going shopping in Dubai, dashing money. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of government too. I'm talking of government. I'm not talking of you because at the end of it, all, my sister, I remember telling me some time ago that they say we are owing as Nigeria that I am owing thirty thousand. I told her no. I'm not owing anything. <laughs> <laughs> them, no, we're owing about three three thousand no. dollars or something. Now you, now you are. <laughs> <laughs> Are you and then? Why are not calling? Why not? Why? Oh, rather, Nigerians are owing. I'm not owing. Mr. Chris, we are not owing. Maybe Yangul is owing. Well, if, <laughs> if, you are, if, you are buying, if you are buying fuel the way you should, you are eating the way you should, and all that, then you are not owing. But if you are not getting the good things of life, if you are not getting the good, the good life, it is because of that money you are not owing. <laughs> Someone borrowed it. You are not owing, but you are suffering it. Mm. So that is it. So, so I totally agree. So the fact is that we must do less borrowing. Yeah. We should find it a, a much more innovative way of raising raising revenue. Our money is settled. Let us not depend on oil oil. That's yourself. How how has this government tried to develop other sectors? Mm. Other sectors. Yeah. You are looking at iron, the iron iron uh, iron industry. You are looking at the other minerals. You are looking at gold. Nigeria is one of the most blessed land in the world. Hmm. There is no state, there is a state that doesn't have something that we can export in Nigeria. I'm telling you, no state. Hmm. Look at all those immigrant India mining that are doing in Jaws, in other, and the Ocean and the rest of. If it's properly harnessed, that is not is enough to give us enough foreign exchange. Yeah. Tourism. Nigeria has some of the best tourism. So we go every day. We go to Kenya. Oh, I want to go on it. We go to Kenya, we go to South Africa. Well, insecurity we is a major problem. That mm -hmm. that's well, well, it well, Chris. It's a handful insecurity. Chris. My brother, I continue to refer to state because that state, most people don't know that Crossover is one of the richest states. When I mean rich, in everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ranch. Have you ever been there? Oh, you wonderful. Have you been wonderful. 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 Well, now, that's what I'm telling you. Far better than UK and the US. Go to Ubuntu. Well, you, we, you, it will just seems as those are the areas things we should be harnessing. But are we talking about it? No. All right, Chris. All right, Chris. There are so <laughs> many things to it, talk about. Yeah. Even Obasanjo has told us that if we want to fight inflation, we can borrow a leaf, go to Zimbabwe, and find out what they did, they did. for their yeah. inflation and all that. But now we are still collecting. We are still collecting grains from Ukraine that is fighting a war. And yeah. when somebody says it's an embarrassment, they say it it's political and all that. But we don't have time to discuss <laughs> this. <laughs> we'll leave yes. it for another day. And we'd like to thank you for thank coming you so on the much. show this morning, Chris. Thank you. We'll continue talking now. No yeah. problem. Always yeah. a pleasure yeah. having yeah. you. Yeah. You too, please, please. <laughs> All right. We've been speaking with Chris Kainde Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He was joining us from Lagos State. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at a hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>